Know the top stories of the day. Understand the issues that matter. This is Manila Bulletin News on Web. Your quick rundown of top news in the country and around the world. Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Be fully informed. Hi, I'm Barbie Atienza. This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte again said that they cannot impose another economic lockdown as it would spell disaster for the country. Duterte said during his televised address Monday, March 22, that the government is trying its best to balance the situation by limiting the movement of people, something, according to him, is well within the power of the states. Metro Manila, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal, collectively known as the NCR Plus, are under a GCQ bubble wherein non-essential travel going in and outside the bubble is prohibited. Only authorized persons outside the residences will be allowed to enter and exit the bubble. During the two-week period, mass gatherings are prohibited and some businesses will be operating at a limited capacity. Public transportation, however, will remain operational. So, kung sirahan mo naman yan lahat, uh, medyo tagilid na ang ekonomiya. And that's a problem. Uh, it will be disaster for our country. Kung sirahan mo talaga lahat, it would be disaster for the country. So, balance-balance na lang tayo. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte explained that the funds borrowed by the government for the vaccine purchases were being held by the banks and not in cold cash by the government pending the delivery of the supply. Duterte made the clarification after two senators questioned the alleged slow vaccine delivery despite the billions of loans secured by the government. The lawmakers were reportedly looking for the vaccine supplies. Duterte assured the nation the financing program with the multilateral lending institutions was not susceptible to corruption, citing that the funds would go straight to the vaccine manufacturers once the supplies are delivered to the country. He said the lawmakers should ask about the money after the first batch of vaccine supplies procured by the government has arrived. At least 1 million doses of Sinovac vaccines bought by the government are expected to be delivered on March 29. Additional 400,000 doses donated by China will arrive on March 24, while another 979,000 AstraZeneca doses could be delivered from March 24 to 26. The president also appealed to his critics to go slow in hurling baseless accusations against the government since it would sow doubt in public minds. He later conceded it was still up to the people if they want to believe the critics or the administration in relation to the vaccine funds. Kaya ang buong akala kasi nila, yung pera na bilyon na bilyon na ibinigay nila sa Kongreso, Nandiyan na sa kamay natin that it's called cash. At uh, ang, ano, nasaan na yung pera. Sinasabi na natin time and again that the money is with the lending bank. Still. Uh, still. still. Uh -huh. So we have not used any single centavo of it because as a matter of fact about the vaccines that uh, we are going to buy Pero donated ito lahat sa ngayon. If you are uh, afraid of corruption, uh, let your mind uh, uh, go easy because uh, these things uh, are not susceptible to anything. The money is in the hands of the bank and they collect yung nagpabili sa atin ng bakuna from the bank. Ngayong maniwala kayo sa amin na sinabi na hindi mo lang 5 centimos na hinahawakan po namin. It's the bank who will pay upon our advice 
na na-deliver na yung uh, bakuna. Hindi tayo ang magpunta. Sila, through paperwork, tawag na ni the transaction has been uh, the, the buy and sell, tapos na at kukunin mo yung pera sa bangko. As part of the government's efforts to eliminate the threat of COVID-19, the country is eyeing to vaccinate 500,000 to 1 million people weekly by April and May. Vaccine SARS Sar Carlito Galvez Jr. said that this would be accomplished once the bulk of vaccines procured by the government arrives in the second quarter of 2021. Galvez said that only around 100 healthcare workers were being vaccinated per day in each vaccination site nationwide in order for the hospitals to effectively and easily monitor the possible adverse effects. At present, Galvez said that around 370,000 healthcare workers have already been inoculated since the vaccination program kicked off last March 1. This represents around 21.71% of the 1.7 million healthcare workers in the country, the A1 priority in the vaccination program that are targeted to be inoculated by the government until April. About 98% or 1,105,500 of the total 1,125,600 vaccine doses have also been deployed to thousands of hospitals nationwide. There were 1,523 established vaccination sites in the 17 regions of the country so far. President Duterte has ordered authorities to hasten the coronavirus testing of returning overseas Filipino workers after receiving complaints of delayed results. Duterte said some OFWs have complained that their test results have been delayed for at least three days. The president immediately got an assurance from Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana that the issue has already been addressed. The government earlier required incoming passengers to undergo facility-based quarantine upon arrival. They are expected to take a RT-PCR test on the fifth day from date of arrival in the country unless the passenger shows symptoms while on quarantine. Lorenzana, who was present in the meeting with the president, acknowledged the recent delayed release in swab test results but assured that the situation has returned to normal. Lorenzana, head of the National Task Force against COVID-19, said the three-day delay occurred when the Philippine Red Cross encountered massive infections that prompted the organization to temporarily halt its testing services. He said government hospitals helped Red Cross with the testing load and worked double time to meet the needs of the OFWs arriving in the country. Meanwhile, the president pushed for the unimpeded return of Filipinos to their residences as he expressed concern about their safety if they have nowhere else to go. It has come to my attention that the service results of OFW is three days delayed. Whatever is causing this delay must be addressed immediately. It Hindi ko malaman ito kung pa-upa-uwi ba sa probinsya pati hindi. Naunahan lang rin ako. Kasi yung una, pati yung taga-probinsya, hindi pwede makauwi sa kanila because of this lockdown and everything. No. No amount of lockdown can, no amount of police power can, can stop uh, a Filipino citizen from going home. Lalo na pa -uwi. In Metro News, 115 barangays in Pasay City placed under localized community quarantine. PGH warns public on fake RT-PCR reports. And Mayor Isko 
Inc.'s Public Housing Ordinance for Affordable Shelters for Manileños. More from this report. The Pasay City Government on Monday placed 115 out of 201 barangays in the city under localized community quarantine. Mayor Emi Calixto Robiano said that of the 115 barangays placed under LCQ, 431 households were affected and undergoing quarantine. She said the city government will continue to help residents afflicted with the virus by providing them with nutritious and vitamins-rich foods like vegetables and fruits. The mayor also said the city government is conducting swab testing and isolation of those who tested positive for COVID-19 to prevent the spread of the disease. She appealed to the city residents to be vigilant and continue to observe the health protocols, particularly wearing of face masks and face shields, and observing two meters of physical distancing. The Philippine General Hospital or PGH warned the public of individuals using the hospital's RT-PCR report forms to fake their test results. The PGH also encouraged the public to check the authenticity of the RT-PCR reports. For verification and test results, the PGH said the public can send email to opswab.uppgh at up.edu.ph. Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Dumagoso on Monday, March 22, approved an ordinance that aims to provide adequate and affordable shelter for Manileños. Ordinance number 8730 or Manila Urban Housing Ordinance aims to strengthen the city government's housing projects that will give priority to the homeless and unprivileged. All public housing projects by the city government will have a mixed income occupancy, but low-income households and informal settlers will be given priority. In 2020, the city government has started construction on at least the three public housing projects, Basic Community, Tondominium 1 and 2, and Binon Dominium. Dumagoso said the Manila Urban Housing Ordinance is in line with his land for the landless program and a realization of his parents' dream. And here are the top news in other parts of the country. Lingayen opens Adventure Park with Take Me Back to the North, a TV ride. Katiklan bound flight stopped at the last minute by Civil Aeronautic Board. And Philippine Coast Guard assists in establishing free internet access in Tawi Tawi. Here are the details. The municipality of Lingayen has recently opened its adventure park to promote tourism in the province's capital town. One of the main attractions of the Lingayen Adventure Park is the Take Me Back to the North ride where tourists can rent an all-terrain vehicle or ATV and enjoy a drive along the wide, breezy, and clean coast of the Lingayen Beach. Lingayen Mayor Leopoldo Batawil assured that they are imposing health and safety protocols in compliance with the Interagency Task Force. Lingayen Town is also the home of the province's provincial capital and other landmarks and attractions. Passengers aboard a Cebu Pacific flight bound for Katiklan, Malay, the gateway town of Boracay Island in Aklan Province, were forced to deplane at the last minute at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport on Monday, March 22, as a result of prevailing travel restrictions. The aircraft was about to leave for Katiklan at around 2 p.m. from Naia Terminal 3 when a personnel from the Civil Aeronautic Board halted the takeoff. The airline processed the rebooking of all passengers with health penalty in accordance to a policy that was implemented amid the coronavirus disease pandemic. The Philippine Coast Guard has assisted the Department of Information and Communications Technology in establishing free internet connectivity in Mapun and Taganak Islands in Tawi-Tawi. The vessel BRP Bagakai of the Philippine Coast Guard ensured the safe and secure transport of essential information and communications technology equipment last week. The Philippine Coast Guard brought to the islands computer monitors, servers, network switches, printers, networking cables, Wi-Fi equipment, and office supplies. Free internet connection points are now available in Turtle Island National High School and Turtle Islands Municipal Hall, as well as in Mapun National High School and Mapun Municipal Hall. In world news, Israeli drug offers glimmer of hope after curing 30 COVID-19 patients. One in three COVID survivors suffer long-term health issues, according to a review. And volcano eruption in Russia's Far East lures daredevil tourists. Let's watch this report. 
An Israeli drug was reported to be successful in initial trials after all 30 moderate to severe cases were cured, providing a glimmer of hope in fighting the COVID-19 crisis. 30 patients in serious conditions participated in the Phase 1 clinical trial of EXO-CD24, an experimental inhaled medication developed at Tel Aviv Soraski Medical Center according to a report by CBN News. 29 of these patients were discharged from the hospital within 3 to 5 days, while one patient took slightly longer to recover. CD24 is a protein delivered to the lungs by exosomes in the drug, helping the immune system to rebalance. The medicine will now move on to further trial phases. Israel is known for leading the world in inoculating its population against COVID-19, with more than 5 million people or half of its population already having received the vaccine. At least one in three patients hospitalized with COVID-19 suffer long-term health issues including multiple organ problems and deteriorated mental health according to a review of studies looking at the lasting impact of the disease. Published in the journal Nature Medicine on Monday, the review looked at the frequency of symptoms among COVID long haulers, the most common of which include fatigue, shortness of breath, anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. While severe COVID-19 infects patients' lungs, leaving many long-term breathing issues, Studies have shown that the virus also attacks on the organs, leading to a variety of complications including cardiovascular illness and chronic inflammation. Authors of the research said the data pointed to an underappreciated health emergencies that governments need to study more closely and find ways to manage. The eruption of volcano on the Russian peninsula has attracted thrill-seeking tourists risking their lives for picturesque photos prompting concerns in recent days from local emergency responders. The Klyuchevskaya Sopka on Kamchatka, a volcanic peninsula in Russia's far east, is the tallest volcano in Eurasia and 15,580 feet and one of the largest active volcanoes in the world. It erupted last month on its northwestern slope, seeping lava and injecting volcano bombs. In recent days, streams of curious tourists have ventured up the volcano slope to take selfies at the edge of the crater and against the backdrop of the splattering lava even grilling sausage in it. By Monday, the intensity of eruption had dropped significantly according to KVERT statement. But emergency responders have nonetheless warned the adventurous tourists after the selfies spread widely across social networks. In entertainment, Despite restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Order of National Artists, jointly administered by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts and the Cultural Center of the Philippines, called for nominations to the National Artist Awards' various categories. The coveted National Artist Awards to be conferred by the President of the Philippines are given to Filipinos who have made significant contributions to the development of the Philippine arts in the fields of music, dance, theater, visual arts, literature, film, broadcast arts, fashion, architecture, and allied arts. Among the nominees are Eddie Garcia, Ramon Revilla, Vilma Santos Recto, Peque Gallaga, Ricky Lee, Pitoy Moreno, Ben Farales, Joey Ayala, and Isagani Cruz. Being deceased, Garcia, Revilla, Moreno, and Farales are nominees for posthumous awards. From these distinguished personalities will come the new set of national artists. In sports, Los Angeles Lakers legend Elgin Baylor, widely regarded as one of the greatest players never to win a championship after playing and losing in eight NBA Finals, died on Monday. He was 86. The 11-time Hall of Famer, a dominant force for the Lakers during 14 seasons in the league between 1958 and 1971, passed away peacefully, surrounded by his wife Elaine and daughter Crystal. Baylor was chosen with the top pick in the 1958 draft when the Lakers were based in Minneapolis. He made an instant impact, averaging 24.9 points 15 rebounds and 4.1 assists in his debut season to rump up two Rookie of the Year honors. The Manila Bulletin, in partnership with East Bay Residences by Primaries Rockwell, is set to host a webinar titled Less is More, Turning Spaces Multifunctional, 
on March 25, 2021 at 7 p.m. The webinar will gather some of the country's respected professional interior designers, including Ram Lopez, Vito Bukoy II, founder of Casa Buda, Mark Steven Perez, one of the partners at Empire Designs, and Raleen Cabrera, co-founder of Gussie, to talk about the do's and don'ts of home remodeling, including how to achieve a conducive home office area, how to choose stylish and functional home furniture, and how to maximize small spaces at home. Registration for the webinar is open until tomorrow, March 24, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Participants can also get a chance to win premium home items. For more details, browse the hashtags Make It Multifunctional, hashtag East Bay Residences, and hashtag MBWFH Ideas. Or visit the Facebook pages of the Manila Bulletin, Manila Bulletin Lifestyle, and East Bay Residences. The registration link is also flashed on your screen. And those are the news on web today, March 23, 2021. For more news and details, get your copy of the Manila Bulletin newspaper tomorrow or log on to www.mb.com.ph. You may also subscribe to our newsletter through the link of this video's caption to have the day's latest news delivered to your inbox. I am Barbie Atienza for Manila Bulletin. Join us again tomorrow. This has been MB Now. Be fully informed.